Okay, so now we are recording and uh, we're starting our new session of uh, Language is a Virus. Uh, welcome everyone, it's, it's great to see old and new friends uh, in, in these screens. And, and today uh, we, we have, have invited um, Nia Davis. Uh, where are you Nia right now? I'm in Swansea, Abatawe. Okay, <laughs> and well, Mar Martin is in France, uh, other friends are in different parts of Europe, England, uh, Carlos and me in Chile, so it's, we are spread all over the, New York. the, the world. <laughs> New York, <laughs> exactly. And oh. there's, there's Martin's cat. So, uh, Nia, uh, uh, would you like to, to start reading something, performing something? Yeah, yeah. Well, the screen is yours. <laughs> hi, 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 everybody. Hi. How are you? Um, so I'm going to show you something first. This is, um, this is the score for tonight's... Mm. Wow. Wait. Wow. What is that? It's, um, it's a piece of slag. Uh, oh. It's from um, a slag tip near here, um, from the copper works that used to be here in the, the valley in Swansea. Um, so it's um, like the kind of byproduct of the smelting of copper in the 18th and 19th century. And um, it's, uh, it also looks like a scholar's stone, doesn't it? Like that you put on your desk for good luck in Asia. Um, but oh. so it's, um, so they use it, they've they actually used it in the buildings here. That, so it's like a recycled material. Um, and I think, I think it's in this house as well, but um, the, I, the, the works that I'm going to share and then afterwards, like I'm going to use that as a score for us to jam. Um, the works that I'm going to share are like, thinking about this copper smelting process and the place where this happened, which is called the Havod. So down in the in the valley here, um, they were smelting like the most copper ever at the time. And um, some of the ore came from um, northern Chile, actually. So I'm quite interested in how it's all we're all connected in objects like this. And um, some of the ore also came from uh, a mine in Cuba, El, El Cobra, which was um, which. Uh, where enslaved Africans were working. So um, the industrialists in this city made a lot of money from um, the cheap or and the lives and the exploitation of people in places like Cuba and Chile and also here. Um, these tiny little houses where this comes from, uh, where the workers live next to this like really toxic um, works. So um, I'm quite interested in uh, in this work in um, regeneration, which is like what they did in the 1990s here. Um, they just basically meant like sticking a shopping centre on top of what works. Um, but they also like lots of things grow, lots of plants grow there and stuff as well. But um, uh, I'm quite interested in what we could do that was like a different kind of better improved regeneration in poetry uh, to, so I hope that's going to be how we can jam together thinking about regeneration uh, poetic regeneration and um, this is the score so I'm just going to read some fragments and some sounds Carlos. whoever dog that Carlos. is mute their microphone <laughs> yeah Carlos. I'm going to mute you, Carlos. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, snick, nip. I didn't know whether to drink it, but orange squash lichen, or is it fur iron pips floating up? Ironics, pretty patchy palms 
decontaminate through skein, how they rust in me, rivers scratched out, or coal, fire, waste, flush, or coal, fire, slag, bury. I want to be self-treating, or coal, fire, waste, flush, or coal, fire, slag, bury. I want to be self-treating with you, ours, ours poetica, flush and rinse and dissolve and tricklet minglement with that system of wheels and pulleys hands free to burn a wheel driving the water up and up and out and through the round and hands free to burn a wheel driving a wheel havod lichens entanglement typically involves peroxide but wallflowers growing out of the cyanide grudgingly heats copper bottomed brats in the squall a skull of an ingot dissolved in the sun and a lemon flu sight, ours, our scenic, our scenic views of the mine head, perpetual melting forever and ever. All that stuff smoke at war, you couldn't breathe. Could you? Was it often like? It was often. You could you couldn't leave your windows open in the night. Hmm. You know. Was it worse night. in the summer or in the winter? Well, was there any difference? No, there was no different. It was a difference. It was only um, if these culverts would collapse. You know. It's terrible. In the it's moment just... you're reading, you look yes. real. Yes. Yes. How yes. to? Yes. How to? Yes. How to look real when you're drawing a bow, side glance, arrowings. Me, the Vivians, had a dog graveyard. Oxidized water seeping out of the mine. Orange dead, orange regen. Regen, hapticality. What happened when ochre emerged in the hall when it manifested as strong history? When you pulled your arms apart, for example, as if drawing a bow, the space that opens, breathing and breathing, the link unsevered, snipping and snipping the fates till the string. Yes, yes, the men would complain when they went to work. Sort of glad to see if they're working. Mm. That's of course, it. they couldn't complain too much unless they get the sacks off. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Not, not so much of the unions in them days. An alchemy. Marauder water, big grey fronts, the ghost signal to the guests, bridge me receptive with anger. All pain is eventually buried or what or what, skirting me and skirting us, decline becomes you, decline signaling to weed, we transport away from here, we transport river to procedure, river to canal, River to burial of the ferris and the moth ghosts, water, luna, luna. I'm, hen, I'm abandoned, guild dress, river to the canal, river to the procedure. No, we, we have no, nothing from the firm at all. So you went up to Only the, your own clothes yes. and they're going to buy a kit bag mm. in town yeah. to put in front of it to stop the heat. I don't know what they better say. Yeah. <laughs> My father said, always wear a good apron, yeah. what? Because it'll dry your testicles up <laughs> and you'll have no children. <laughs> and he had 15 and he'd been doing it all his life. <laughs> 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 Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Ritual after David Jones. 
Red Riff, Red Riff. I chanted Red Riff, Red Riff until Red Drift, Red Ridge, then quiet, then sung, then words, then quiet, then sung, said, ah, said sung, then Red Riff, my young love said to me, then quiet, then some Red Riff in the thighs and sympathy for the women, then spoke for grounding, then Marla, then just a normal dance, please, just a normal dance, please. There, this cushion affix, a riff of red, squandered the canister's content was viatic meats, a glisten prefect, a favilla, karma, a favia, singular, glint benched, costo the nick, so the nicks of my sandals, I pray to Homera, skin tag, brush tail, slide over the rocks on your belly. It scrapes to see the pools, the pools, six iconic Aximanders who philosophize that life began in the water in iconic. Blood's right. Blood's metamorphosis feathers in shreds, shreds in feathers or so the story goes. Out into the night, flies in the dark, hands of feathers, five, force taste, foretaste tasted like petals, a lover falls into the join in my inter lover green rush, your bounteous watch, ancestress rover woven woven from the ditch, lover and green rush, your bounteous watch of eyes in the wood, be on my spine and over, flutter my morph flutes for crone. The untold part flitters a crown of meadow sweet, a bracelet of Derwen anklet and birch catkins in here. Orpheus was pets at home. Pentheus was gruel. Euripides farts long and guttural. Says a chalice, says amber, says I am the implement, says spine out of pine, says Ever rose, says scream, fetch, or fetish, says the pail of water, says lech, says grandiose, says home, says algae, says great rock, says we can set to work in this beauteous rage, says we can rebirth in ash flower, can fall into lip balm, shrine like ash flowers. Lover nuanced me flush with her cardio willing to be secret or unsaid. Immerse, emerge, immer, immer, mer, mer, effectual, sandalless, soft oak, it was good to meet her, he said. Parakeet aloft, my green visitor, or any everyday bounty, there's an isle on the shining foreshore. The moon of Poth call, I know vanilla, never know lilicking, no whispered true nocturnal balance. I was made for loving you, but I loved another in the wood, so you metted me, babe, need warts. This Bolognese denial, a ring of precious rave gods, Jarvis, Fritjof, Julian, and Lisa. Ken I in the medium of Hardwich, Ken Saint of Lycan and of Hedge, Saint of the Patch of the Ditch, so I am reborn of the Lycanate. My floristry is flying to you by night, etc. Green freedom, etc. Alterwise by owl bite, florist, forest library, fla, sa, a, a flax, sa flax, brow, meadow heights. Since you were gone, dear, life don't seem the same. Please come back again. And after all said and done, 
There's only one girl of my dreams. It's you. One final bit, a score for ritual poetry. One, funeral games of the great mammalia, David Jones, or birth games of the little mammalia. Two, electrics and water, oil and water folded together but not dissolving in two. Three, bimashian sris kim bim kiskedreth. Four, the sludgy treatment. Five, mouth, placemaking in the mouth. Six, aquatic properties, mask play, costume play. Seven, expanded verb action, timed. Eight, dos bath gumrag. Nine, fold into sludge, a baggy relationship. Ten, learn some vocab, repeat, repeat, repeat. Eleven, Vespers felt fluttering, sounded a sonigation or a beat, sounded fantastical, placemaking in the word, is it possible? Climb into or onto a yizik. 14. Ploughed the mouth as a syllable or a ploughed field to roll around in. Mangle wurzels at every arm length. 15. Family dinner. I impressed his family with a joke about the arm of a suitor made of profiteroles. Rolls the mangle wurzels into a field and leave us there to chew them through the winter. 16. Lean, dark weeks of action under the cover of gloom. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Plethy, repeat, repeat, repeat. Cycles of action. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Cycles of verbs. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Communitasism. Repeat, 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 repeat. So, here's your score again. So, you can have a, a 10 minute, I hope you'll join me for 10 minutes. Yeah? In the copper.
Diolch. I think um, we're going to have a, another jam at the end, we thought. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> Thank you. And the chat now. Oh, no. no. Now we can uh, talk a little bit. And uh, just one first question, if you can talk to us a little about the, uh, how how your writing ha has been uh, uh, related or um, influenced it, by um, by your contact with uh, uh, different kinds of poets uh, in in different languages and, and also uh, with uh, sound poetry, etc. Uh, you, you have written and published uh, lots of poetry books, but you also have this uh, uh, performatic sound uh, dimension and. Uh, how it has been your your road in in that way, or how the two dimensions uh, relate to each other? I'm quite interested in. Um, I'm not well. I like. I was a bit. Yeah, I like sound. I like thinking about sound poetry, and and but I'm also interested in um, it, all the embodied things you do around poetry. So not just the noises, but like the, the movement as well. Um, I'm interested in ritual and um, Bob yeah. Cobbing, Bob Cobbing's. Um, got a really good quote that um, I'm studying extensively at the moment um, where he says that poetry or communication is primarily a physical thing you do it with the whole of you um, muscular and um, but like bodies and at the end he says then you start chanting bodies join a ritual ensues and um, so Yes, that's that's my relationship to sound poetry is thinking about all the the surround of um, of the body making a noise and how that like relates to um, language. Yeah. Um, but in terms of in, in terms of like other other languages as well, like um, I'm not sure where to begin with that because that's um, there's been quite a few different journeys through translation. In fact, some of my poems just yeah. came today in translation from oh, Carlos yeah, yeah, or yesterday uh, in, Sp <laughs> in Spanish. So really, like, really, 
I, I, it's really exciting for me and um, actually um, visiting Chile and having contact with Chile and my Chilean friends that that's also been really interesting in terms of sound poetry and performance yeah. and ritual and performance are as um, like as a kind of medium for for mm. po the poem like me and Gazal did some um, weird thing in a, in a gallery with a lemon mm. um, and these things were just possible because of the kind of context that um, Chile opened up. Um, but yeah, I've worked on loads of other translation projects and not all of them, like, it's quite difficult collaborating and translating. It's not always been easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm, I'm very interested in your, uh, your, your view of uh, your consideration of poetry as a ritual, as, as, as you said, related to what uh, Bob Cobbing said, or I don't know, uh, Jerome Rodenberg or Ma uh, mm. Michael Sullivan or Cecilia Vicuña, etc. But uh, uh, a lot of those views uh, um, came on the 60s and the 70s as a part of yeah. a lot of different changes. And I, I don't know, with the hippies and peace culture and, and all that. Uh, yeah. So I, I'd like to know how, how do you think about that, those uh, possibilities of making a ritual? Uh, nowadays in, in this whole different context yeah, yeah. or I don't know ironic about it or, or not I, I don't know but how do you feel because it's different of course yeah yeah I don't think I think um yeah so the 60s seems to have been like this massive like turn to ritual and performance mm. um but I don't think it stopped since then like mm. poets using all their different like um performative means to like share poetry so you're not just reading a text but you're kind of like yeah. activating the poem as a like manifestation through the kind of like through the medium of being together or that's one way of seeing like poetry reading as a ritual because you're kind of like activating it with people mm -hmm. um yeah through zoom it's all still quite experimental i think yeah. that I, I, I don't know. I still get this feeling now I, I, that I was really enjoying. I still get this feeling that I performed with other embodied people, even though I'm in my room. Um, so I think there's something of the of the of the ritual still about the, this, even though it's like mediated and it's not. Because I was interested in like the poetry reading when you're together and you're like you're kind of um, sharing a space like yeah. that. You, like, I liked I like Maggie O'Sullivan's way of like mm. creating um, rhythms out of like that you can kind of move along to yeah. when she's reading her poetry like da -da 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 -da, and you're kind of like it's like a beat mm. almost but actually you can get that from listening to recordings of it as well so it's not you don't have to be there um, but yeah I think we yeah in terms of whether you can make a, like a authentic ritual that like will depend on your um cosmology or like mean your symbols and your meanings and i think um like most poets believe in poetry so like maybe the cosmology is poetry so the ritual means something to us um mm. even if it's not like um we're not intending to uh invoke mm. um a deity this time round. Mm. Well, maybe Martin is intending to, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, Why not? reading today in the news that uh, uh, there are uh, masses through Facebook, for example. So also religious and conservative uh, uh, religious people are, are using this media. So it's, it's really, I don't know, it's really amazing. The, huge changes. Uh, somebody, some, somebody said as a joke that uh, you have to, um, they, they, they will have to give you, ¿Cómo se dice hostia? Alguien sabe, ¿no? Hostia de... You know the, the, the thing that you give in the, in the, the, the mess? The, the com communion wafer, something like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. you have to ask it uh, by uh, Uber Eats. So <laughs> they were talking with, uh, with that. So, yeah, so it's interesting because I, I like very much the idea of poetry and, and rituals or mysticism as medium, as connecting you with different places. But now mm -hmm. it's like we have a new uh, 
media, uh, again with the connections and the technology, uh, it's like a double uh, mediation. So, so it's interesting because uh, there can, uh, it can appear lots of errors, mistakes, and, and also they change uh, what we expect to, to communicate. I mean, the, the communication being so mediated right now is, is really different. I mean, we're always in this kind of Zoom meetings, we're always uh, asking, uh, do you hear me? Uh, is it okay? Or, or you have a delay? So yeah, it's, it's really interesting, this, this change. Yeah, it's like, um, like, it feels like it's chewy sometimes, like yeah. someone's chewing the line, like, yeah. <laughs> um, which is why I was really wondering what it would be like to jam then, like, um, but actually made quite a lot of like quiet noises. So, yeah. um, because I think if someone, if, if there was loud noises, like, it, I don't know if Zoom could cope with mm. some of this stuff, like, um, also, you can't listen is easy in like because part of what's happening in like when we're all together in a room is that we listening with like all of our bodies. Yeah. And this is like um, it's a completely different way to listen. So you yeah, kind of more narrow and and also every one of us uh, is hearing this. Some uh, some of you with he uh, headphones, other with uh, computer speakers, other with uh, great monitors. Our rooms are different, the, the acoustics are different. So, uh, I mean, we always hear very different from, from the others, but, but in this case, it's, it's uh, a lot more different, different. So the kind of connection is, is really tricky. It's, but it is interesting to, to do it at the mm. same time. Yeah. And, and maybe the deity is your stone. Yeah, maybe. It looks like quite kind of... Um, <laughs> Like a lingam or something, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like a lingam. <laughs> like a, a volcanic origin? What is a, what do you get, take from it? I just like, I was in trance, then I don't take care about meaning. I just like, it's in your sound and your movement. Where, where it came from, the, the, that stone? It's, um, it's, a, it's from the slag heap. Um, so it's from the rubbish of the, the copper smelting process. They made these huge, um, they were like mountains of like, this stuff um it was just like the waste product of the smelting process and um they just like dumped them next to people's houses and then like decades later they have cleared them away now and made they they built so this is from the house my friend's house so they built them they put them into the walls and they built them with them again and sometimes you get like what i was interested in was um like sometimes you have like flowers growing out of them even though there's like cyanide and all kinds of stuff in there um but only if you break it down like hopefully it's not gonna yeah but how felipe say that now we are connected in different like um i don't know internet stuff and electronic things mm -hmm. that is kind of is a really proof of the relativity theory of einstein you know because it has some kind of thing to say if you are like in atinas you're in chile but at different hours are you in the same space time yeah yeah that is now that is the proof that we can that space time exists because we have different uh you know, felipe has the sun over his head we are in the night you know like the oh, we are different, clouds, but, well. <laughs> different space but at the same time but if you look at that from the real far from off we are in the same space time and we are connected now in, in the zoom masha facebook all, all the stuff but also, we are connected with uh, other things. You are connected with that stone, at the same time with other yeah. things. So um, I'm interested in how it is like collapsing time because in it there is potentially something from Chile, like from the 18th century, maybe, that got processed like this, and then it turns into someone's house. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm interested in how, like, historically these connections or then coming to now and uh, I don't know if it's not like secular time but there is like does feel like a more kind of um, time is more full in like when you have something historical like this and you bring it into um, like a ritual space like this reading mm -hmm. like it does feel like there's a lot of different times stacked on top of each other but I don't know that's just my feeling maybe it's not it's not it's not everyone feels like that 
overposition of different universe, like uh, the, that kind of multiverse, that, well, you know, the, the, mm. the feel of connect yourself with a stone, but also you are connected with different things. I remember a piece we make together, I, I asked you for some collaboration with your mouth, you know, remember? Yeah. You know, really like, uh, and I love that <laughs> your, your work, that kind of collaborative thing, you know, you, you have your open space. You like mm -hmm. another, for your own, like a scale, the Everest alone. You like open the Everest for everyone. It's quite interesting, Martin, because after that, I was thinking, um, so I, I got kind of, uh, I did a spot in his performance where he like focused the camera on my mouth reading. Yeah. Um, after that, I was thinking like, do, do people sometimes, um, do audiences sometimes get distracted by um, my mouth rather than what I'm saying in terms of the poetry? Like, and that, you know, instead of becoming, that being an annoying thing, um, I thought maybe I'd just make it a point of interest, right? Rather than like, can stop something you can study and say, well, why, why is this more interesting than what I'm saying in a performance? Like mm -hmm. sometimes that's what happens. No, but it was like a part of, of the, all the things, you know, it was yeah, like yeah. image of the sun, of the, some planets and me like burning straight and, 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 and your mouth and your lips and your, your you know, that, that kind of breath that the, the Indian Hindu people call it prana. It was like a kind of ether in before, or I don't know, like or Tao in the Chinese people or uh, key in the Japanese people, you know, that kind of space. Anaxagoras say that we're not living in the over like a solid earth. We're, we're in the, in the, I don't know how you say in fondo, in the phone, in the, in the, <laughs> the bottom of an ocean of, of uh, ether, you know, of ocean of wind, an ocean of prana. Uh, which, which is your star? Which is what? Because if, if you, you have a stone, and what, what is, what is, which is your star, you, 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 you know, your, your light over you? I do feel, I, I like doing all these like embodied practices. Um, I've been like basically a dilettante, like trying everything, but especially like movement um, stuff, like, um, authentic movement and like loads of different embodied things and there's always like this point where well, you don't know what to do so focus on the breath just focus on the breath like oh, I don't know what to do and like, you're all tense and you're like oh well maybe if I just breathe then like I didn't even know how to answer your question so I just was like focus on the breath which is you know. yeah but do you feel the, that breath that breathing like if you are a kind of oxygen or another things like different, like us, I don't know, I think I think like virus, you know, virus like make us so much more elegant, you know, the people don't have to make so much travel, and so much connect, too much people, like too much, uh, um, losing time, losing time in the, in, in the, yeah. Just in, 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 in not not occupate of your your being, just like uh, it's past time. When when I when I hear you, when I feel you, and you you like performing, because I know better you performing that that you. you know, I feel that connection, you know, like uh, I feel that that like uh, think who are connected you to the to the really high space, another into really like deep ground earth and that, that that was my question what 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 is your how you prepare yourself to perform poetry i think um i like i started uh thinking about all these things performance voice breath ritual um after like someone told me that when i was on the stage i was like on my tiptoes and i was like about to it looked like I was about to fly away, um, which I think potentially I still do that. Um, yeah. So I had to kind of figure out how to like um, be grounded. Um, 
But I don't know why I wanted to fly away from the, from the stage, like, but always like moving, like always like shifting from. Yeah, yeah, at the same time, you're really in the in the ground. You know, you're, 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 you're in the ground, but you're like, you know, you're just not only fighting, You're like really, I don't know. That is my impression. Poetry and, and I, for me, you know, like it's more important than the meaning of your poem or the or the what you want to say. So like, it's your your presence, like poet, and that is. That's for me an, an experience. I don't know all the poets that are here present, you know, more, not only the, the work of a poet, if like the poet, like a kind of ethical position in the universe, like uh, we're connected with, with something and we're transmitting something to people. What, I don't know how you feel that, Mia, and maybe to the others after, what do you think mm -hmm. about it? Felipe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, before. Well, this that uh, I this. <laughs> huh? because um yeah my father's a geologist so mm. and he worked well he's, he's retired he's a karate teacher now but he worked for many years in um in the in the oil industry and I was always like quite fascinated by like the geology and the the idea that there was this like rig this like imaginary world where he worked. And um, at the same time, I felt this like tension because it was like, I knew that the oil was polluting and um, causing a lot of damage. Um, so I always had that like sort of placing between like uh, the rock or the ground and then the sea, cause he was like in the North Sea so I don't know if that helps <laughs> answer the question a bit, but you're like always like reaching out for something that you, oh, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't have it or not. I don't know, that, that, that is, I feel when, you know, when like in mythology or things like that, you know, you have your, you know, the, the, that transparency, uh, transmission of your father about the stones, you know, the positive love the stones, yes. but at the same yeah. time that connect you with some transparent, that I call it that transparent that people like, I don't know, people who work with stone, like, I don't know. Uh, crystals. A lot of, yeah, crystal people. I don't know what, and, and that, and that put you in like a, some like a, like a, a Gamma Cassiopeia or some stars in the heaven that they produce stones. And we produce gold, that we, we are famous in the past for extraterrestrial people because we produce a lot of gold, but everything is. Yeah. Um, I also like, I forgot to mention that, that, that this area made copper, but a big area. My family were all from um, the coal mining area up the valley. And that was another kind of like huge sort of extractive history. Um, so like, I mean, you know, people who like crystals, like, um, like some people have given me crystals and I haven't rejected them. Um, but like so many of them have come from these mines where there's like these terrible conditions and they're the idea is they're meant to kind of absorb good energy but like, I don't quite know how good the energy is if it's like someone was like totally exploited when they were mining it so um, but I wonder if uh, you're what you're asking is like whether the whether the stones like yeah send you to the you know the <laughs> The, the transmission of other thing, you know, the stone connected to a star. Oh, know? right. <laughs> I like that. It's lovely. Of course, a, a, every, a, each stone have a connection with different stars. And on the, the phosphor that we have in our bodies it came from like four, four stars before the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And now we, we feel the, uh, the background sound of the Big Bang, you know. I have that, that little machine, it's called in, in seven hertz. And it sends you like the Schumann, uh, like it, it, it's like a, um, how you say in English, like the, the, a timer to, to set you in the, in the sound of, the, of the, this universe, you know, the seven and six to three hairs, I don't know, like, like bring them in. But anyway, I, it's, la it's only one of the, all the possibilities that we have, you know, I, and that's, that is amazing dream also when, when oh, because you know, when I, we met, us together several times and I, I, I and each time that we we don't see for for a while 
I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we exist, we're making poetry in another part of the, the universe at the same time. The same as Felipe. And that is why it's so important that kind of reunion because like uh, uh, we are in different space and, and that is, to, uh, I, I repeat, that is a proof of that kind of rela relativity theory that space is a time is the same thing for, for one universe. Well, how, how do you imagine yourself in, in, a, in a black, black white TV? <laughs> I can only, you're making me think of those like wisecracking, the era, the 1940s era, like I can't, I can't divorce it from, from that kind of Hollywood look. Hmm. I, mean, I wonder if you can change it on here to black and white, no, probably not. Maybe sound, maybe you can explain with sounds. <laughs> uh. I, I was wondering, um, because th there's a beautiful uh, uh, metaphor uh, for a lot of uh, poets to, uh, that, that they see that they see themselves as a, um, how do you say, um, uh, Carlo, ayúdame, como joyero, como se dice? Joyero, uh, uh, jewel maker, something yeah, like that? Jewel maker. Yeah, that, jewel this maker. Idea, there's this idea. Jewel that, a jeweler, right? Uh, like a jeweler, it... like this idea uh, of choosing the the words in an in an exact place. Yeah, the, this this is an idea more linked to maybe Mallarmé or or those or those kind of poets like uh, this idea of a um, that the that the poem is like an architecture and it has only a definitive form, right? It's like one of, of course, one of the possibilities of seeing the the the, the, the writing of poetry and to to put it in like a perfect uh, state. Look, it's, it's fixed and it works and it's bright and it's beautiful. But uh, how do you see that idea uh, in relation to other, other ways of thinking about the the poem uh, when they are really performance? That there's no a definitive version. Uh, you can publish it in a book, but when you read it, you can uh, change it uh, uh, at, at, at the same time, or I don't know, uh, or you can republish the, the poem in, in, in another version. How, how do you see uh, that idea of the poem as something fixed or like uh, more fluent? Um, quite interested in this because like on the one hand you have like um um i so i believe that every time you encounter or read something especially when it's read aloud even if you do it on your own like you're activating or if you poem you or... each time and every performance the meaning of a performance is like in its mm. unfolding mm. um but on the other hand like if if performance or um like activation or whatever you want to call it is like a totally ephemeral and completely unable to like pin down it makes it very uh, it, it makes like the poem potentially quite like out of reach of of like people so um i think i, I do also believe in like reproduction right like, so printing publishing recording because you can still get an awful lot. You can still like get, like, I still feel, I've watched, um, or I read about like things that Carolee uh, Schneemann did. Oh. And I, I haven't even seen the video, I've just seen one picture and, and you can still kind of feel something from that. And then conversely, like you think of um, all the texts and languages and poems that have been lost because they weren't recorded or like, so there is something like, you can't kind of say everything's completely ephemeral and it's never um it's never capturable like uh, but that's actually not what you're asking you're asking about fixed forms which yeah yeah and, and also i was thinking you go from uh, form to form right yeah and, and and this idea i don't know uh, uh i mean in this group and in the other sessions we have people that uh, come from from music from arts from performance other from a more conventional 
a literary practice and I don't know in I remember in, in my generation at least the idea was that you wrote a poem and you keep it correcting correcting like polishing that's why I was thinking of of, of a duel uh, and after a lot of time uh, when it was like okay uh, then you can publish but I mean uh, in this other way of thinking and performing poetry maybe you can write something and perform it and maybe never publish it or whatever it's it's it's, it's not only fixed to the book uh, and and also it's not yeah. it's more difficult to find a a different version or, or the idea of correcting something to make it better is i don't know not not so so strong maybe it's um like, uh, something I read earlier was, I wrote it last week for these um, students that I've been teaching. Um, but it's a bit scary because you might put it on the internet. Um, but I wrote, yeah, I wrote this for the students who are doing a project on arsenic. Um, so I thought it's best to just write something especially for them. Uh, but on the other hand, like when I first started like, l like writing poetry, I was in this like... Um, place in London like workshops and it was quite so I suppose it was what you call like mainstream like we would craft a poem for a long long time before um thinking it was ready um and then like of course I don't really uh I don't work like that anymore like I read something that yeah I wrote last week and I won't craft it anymore um but on the other hand I did learn a lot from that um, more mainstream idea of mm. of of being very detailed I've learned a lot about editing and um it's not like um it's, it's still like it's still probably something like you have to have both things going on probably but yeah I don't really believe in craft anymore mm. and what about you guys uh, uh, I mean everyone is invited to, to talk yeah how, how do you think about these ideas of craft for example which is a very I mean for me, it's not good or, or bad. It's like uh, a way of thinking how you can uh, work yeah, with poetry or whatever art. Also, I think that kind of good and bad in poetry is not a good uh, different distance. I, I, I just like, sometimes I feel like it's poetry or not poetry. You, or, you know, like when you say like, it's a good poet or a bad poet, it's like, I think it's like kind of, uh, you are like the in the part of the, our group, not outside of the group. and then. Uh, that, um, but uh, uh, yeah, I believe in witchcraft. I believe in witchcraft. <laughs> what is witchcraft? What is witchcraft? Luna. What is? <laughs> Adrian. What is brujería? Brujería. Spell. 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 <laughs> I was told a long time ago about this idea to um, embrace the mess. And they were talking about how I wasn't sure how to craft my poems. And they were saying, well, why not just leave it all in? So there's an in-between point where you sort of want to kind of make it be something, but also know that it has its own life. And there's brujeria involved. You sort of just like, you trust it and just see where it's going to take you. And um, how that relates to the page is another matter. Like how you want it to be on the page is one thing, but I agree with Nia where it, it has a new life every time you read it. And um, crafting it is just living it, being it. I just wanted to come back to the, um, the issue of the, um, the breathing you were talking about. And it's, I think it's really interesting how like it's becoming like a crucial thing nowadays. We're in the middle of a pandemic where a respiratory virus is secluding us at home, is uh, kind of like uh, affecting our, our, our daily life. Um, a couple of days ago in the States, a man was killed by the police. He was choked to death. He claimed he, he couldn't breathe before he died. And he was not the first one. And there's like several demonstrations all over the world where the police repress people by throwing like tear gas that prevents you from breathing properly. 
And I don't know, I think it was Olson who like, uh, wrote this essay, Projective Verse, right? Um, essay where he talks about breathing and, uh, and poetry and how, I mean, such a, a daily activity, a quotidian thing, is becoming like so crucial and, and political nowadays. And, and I don't know, I was just thinking about that while you were talking about breathing and, and the process of like composing a poem or delivering mm. uh, a certain piece yeah um yeah there's two mm. things i think about with that like one is that um well, some of the stuff that i played and and read about was was talking a little bit about the air pollution when the smelting and the industry was here it was it was like a lead um lead pollution and um it was like so so bad that people couldn't breathe and yet um now like 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 there's so it's also kind of like how like the air quality is like um with the pandemic when it when everything was quiet like because of lockdown the air quality was like visibly better and you could breathe a lot better so this is this kind of like terrible irony um but yeah like something that should be like the commons um with that political like context like the common air that we breathe is like is almost like being kind of like encroached upon um by these like violent structures um because also there's the air there's the common air that like we speak through and make sounds through um juliana Spar has a poem about that right it's a disconnection of everyone with lungs when she wow. talks about 9-11 and how uh, people in New York was, was breathing that polluted air, but it was basically, you know, like uh, debris, but also the people who died there and how, you know, we were connected. I mean, all people were connected through the air they, they were breathing. And um, that also reminds me of uh, Muriel Rukeyser, right? Uh, uh, the Book of the Dead and, and uh, the relationship between poetry and mining. There's a lot, of, uh, a large tradition of that, uh, and uh, and how like uh, respiratory diseases are also, you know, uh, related to mining. Uh, yeah. And it's weird because I mean the elements uh, they are everywhere, but they mm. can also be poisonous, you know. Mm. Yeah, but also, you know, the, that kind of uh, respiration, you know, that, that breathing is not the just the individual breathing. Is the planet that is breathing, you know? The planet had to stop to allow that all the, 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 the plants, all the animals could breathe because we are like the human, like that, 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 that. We, we, you know, if you, if you read now, all the, the, the new, like, uh, bring up of coronavirus, they came from the people who uh, make uh, meat, kill animals to make meat. You know, that, that this is the first. Uh, you know, uh, beginning of, of of the virus, and then and that in the, in the, I think that virus is I I don't know if it's a language is a virus, but virus is a language, and virus is like a language who came from something more intelligent than human being, and and like put us in a kind of humble state. So they, uh, yeah, animals have to walk, plants have to walk, the earth have to stop to travel too much. You know that we are we became more elegant i think more after the virus in a way you know i don't know if, if, if we stop to say like i'm a poet i make my book i make my record you know like that no we're in poetry that is a like love in some poetry in a way it's like a kind of collective work you know like uh we, we are we are together and me i i feel you that since the beginning the first time I, I remember the first time that I saw you. Like, can can you read with me? And like, well, 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 like well, you, you know, you're you're the beginning of something else. It's that kind of collective um, uh, organization of things. And it, I I see, and that is why we, we Felipe we insist a lot that we like. I think it come more from from the woman and from the man now. You know, like that kind of. Um, new perception and new organization of political uh, and poetical uh, connection. How do you, how do you feel the world? If, if you win like, uh, I don't know, the 
the new president from New, Ze new Zealand. And, and you have to organize the world. What do you will do? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I mean. Imagine if you you know that you are elected for all the poet of the universe. Poet of the universe. That's more interesting than president of a country. Multiverse. Not only the universe. Multiverse. <laughs> you make like an, a political action in the world now to go beyond that kind of. Or, the, or, or how do you feel like really feel, you know when mm -hmm. that, what you can make of or like, like a woman in that possibility of to organize and and dictate uh, political directions <laughs> um well it would be good to have like um an immediate uh a re immediate reassignment of resources towards the things that we need, like social, ecological. But I don't know whether, like, the poet of the universe has those powers, like, like, like without, like, how, what, like, democratically. No, no, no. But, but, I, but I, I go that not beyond that kind of political uh, uh, terrestrial. I, I go. Oh, right. I, Eco, eco cosmological, you know, like an eco terrestrial in a way. What do you put from? Well, how would. Uh, from, for your warm, like. For your flesh, you know. That came from, please. I'm quite interested in, like, um, like Im imminence or, like, the. Um, you know, the, the kind of, like, yeah, terrestrial is a nice way of. The other world that's terrestrial that's right here. Um, yeah, but you have the earth, you have the, the water, you have the fire, and you have the earth. And in the China element, you have the fifth element. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, just like because I, I think that all the, the movement has now from like just listen to the woman thoughts, not like the the things coming from another composition of the political direction, you know, like we had some clowns, like Macron, Putin, you know, like all that stupid guys who the, the worst conduce the, the, the country to the more like a violent, et cetera. Then I'm sure that already, or I don't know when or before, maybe if you yourself to the black white tv what what, what is, um... i keep i keep thinking about um i found i found out that um there was i didn't realize but there was this like fire in um the national museum in in uh brazil and um all these archives were completely burnt in a few hours um and there were these there were recordings of languages from the amazon that um there was no other recordings of them in existence um and i felt like i f find that like incredibly like it's horrifying really but it's also like um i was wondering if there is a way to hear those languages or um those people that spoke them like do they exist somewhere mm. still even though there's no rec you know like they've been completely destroyed is there a record or is there like on a kind of um not mystical, but like um, on another like dimensional Connect level. Like, are they are they there somewhere? Connected to the multiverse. Yeah, I'd like to hear those languages. Like, and maybe yeah. we can try to speak them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, your, yeah, Luna's got a Luna's here. Got some good poems from that kind of like um, the Patagonian poems. Um, yeah. Have you ever? Um... Sorry, I have a question. Little question, Ian. Okay. Do you do you see the because I, I think it's at some point you started to put more the idea of the ritual within the poem, 
And uh, do you see that as something that has to do with the collective? Mm. Yeah, well, I think that was my original... Um, what, what I've, <laughs> well, I originally thought like that um, if I investigated ritual that I could find a way of being collective or communal that I was obviously felt I was lacking in some way. But then over the course of it, I realized that poetry is already collective and language is like already this like shared mm. community. Um, which isn't to say that I was like craving some sort of like collectivity. Um, Cause I don't think ritual is collective or not collective. It's just, it, it's just a, it's like a technology. <laughs> um, but I think you can learn about other people and the other and collective like a relation through, um, through ritual, but you can with any like embodied communal thing that we do together. Andres, what do you think about it? Andres. Andres. About what? Please. About like, huh? uh, I, uh, I remember we, we were like confined with Andres and Mia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was like a pre corona. The, the first like preparation. By the snow, not by the, by the virus, by the snow. By the snow, but it was wonderful. By the snow with your drum, Mia. Hmm. It's now. Andres. Right. Free association. <laughs> yeah. Jam session. <laughs> yes. Free association of what? The association of uh, of thoughts. Of ideas <laughs> or sounds? <laughs> the association of humanity with the cosmos and the earth and the other planets and the radio. Do you do you, do you feel that the this they they they, con they felt the last week a kind of like emission of radio emission from a galaxy, like I don't know which galaxy is really far from off. That is every uh, 156 days sent a sound. Maybe the, we can connect with them. Maybe we like at some point we like uh, we need. Our like uh, social rule of a uh, social tool, social uh, experience, is to receive that kind of um, emission. Not only it's not only mathematics. It's just like we receive poetry, and we transmit poetry. How how do you imagine that, Andres? That kind of sounds. Um, I can imagine them. I can hear them, but. Not imagine, imagining them. I read recently that there were 36 uh, possible worlds with life in the solar system yeah. that were trying to communicate with us. I don't know why they added that uh, bit at the end, but uh, at least 36 sort of uh, alien nations are trying to communicate with us at this moment, according to NASA. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't think the problem should be the language, because we obviously don't speak the same language. But sound uh, carries something that is beyond, um, or not to do with the um, sense uh, or, or it's to do with effects and with how because it's a um, you get sound to your senses not to your brain in a, in a way uh, it's more immediate and um, so i believe we can communicate through sound um, and not necessarily we all could communicate through non-vocal or non-linguistic sound uh, we would understand what we mean. That's what I think. Yeah, may maybe at the same time, you know, the, the, the language of virus is like, uh, you know, it came from animals. All, all the coronavirus, all the terrier virus, they came from animals' mutation. Then maybe, and I, that is what I see now, is like, we, we not listen the animal language. 
in a way, you know? And then we have to send us like a message of our cells, of our proteins, of our things, to understand, hey, stop to like uh, eat us, uh, kill us, uh, thing. And I, I think that, uh, I don't know, I, I, I admire that kind of virus. It's like a kind of, um, you know, it's like uh, make the human being put put ourselves in like a humble position say like, wow, we're not understanding anything about the world. Uh, and and I, I will try to like, uh, I, I think in sound, you know, in music, I I make now, I, I work in a, in, a, in a new record with, with Joaquin Montesfi, who has like wonderful records. Like, ah, the cats take the, the record. Uh, yes. Does Joaquin know that? Joaquin Montesfi. <laughs> He has, he has that uh, label, Ratum Records, who just published Raul Hausman Point Phonetics. Please buy that, like because we have to. He's a collector, and he he like um, just like is the best sound of Raul Hausman. We can listen now. Um, I don't know, Joaquin. What do you think about all of that stuff? Dear one, mi amor. Can you talk a little bit? Your your, your microphone uh, cut off. <laughs> you have to open your mic because it's, it's like a turn off. Well, I'm enjoying a lot listening to you, so you can go on. And if I feel like um, talking a bit, I will, but uh, not, not now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, later. Yes, yes. Uh, Dirk. Yes, <laughs> Uh, same same is true for me. I'm enjoying to listen to, and it's it's a special experience to to have all these different languages and uh, different sounds, and uh, all filtered through Zoom, which makes a sound performance itself. Uh, listening to all these different voices uh, and the different microphones and the different rooms, mm -hmm. and that's the most um, interesting thing for me right now, uh, because it's a very unique experience. Uh, so we have our performance right now, no matter what we do. And all these sounds that come in from the backside, some sounds we can't identify really. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting, yeah. I'm sitting in Germany right now in Frankfurt, so maybe some of you don't know me. I'm, I'm a sound poet and a poet. And I actually worked with a lot of uh, repetition too, and I like the idea of ritual too, even though I'm completely non-religious person. <laughs> but I think poetry and ritual and magic is something that is just basically connected. You cannot uh, really put it apart completely. Mm -hmm. So um, I really like this uh, idea of Nia to, to have this ritualistic aspect of, of poetry and that it's also connected to the body very much. And this is, I think, the most difficult thing for, uh, for many of us right now that we can't perform. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I find it very, very difficult to, to perform um, just uh, be a live stream or this kind of thing because I really need to, to feel the vibes of the audience or need to feel the vibe of the performer really and it's 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 not the same really if you're, if you're not on stage. Uh, do, yeah. do you perceive the vibes of, of Nia like making poetry? I, I was I, I feel that in a way I don't know uh, maybe there are not people who, who work with virtual reality you know in like a, a kind of um, Sense to create like a new, a new hallucination, and you know, like what, what, how you imagine, Dirk, the if you can create a new world with your own hallucination. <laughs> what is your hallucination for uh, the new world? I'm not sure if I really understood what you mean. Uh, it sounds very hallucinative what you say, but <laughs> what is the question really? It's not a question. It's a proposition. That, uh, yeah, Nia. Yeah. Well, just, just that uh, it seems like repetition is like the key for, what well, the key or like the kind of um, the most fascinating thing in, um, in ritual and poetry, but maybe also outside of, 
of those contexts like because there's something that happens when you've like really repeated something and repeated something like some that's when kind of like things emerge and um but I think I what I know I want to do is like read more about how musicians understand that because um like I don't I don't know if I know and there's something about like um I was talking yesterday with Camilla who you should get to to share on here Camilla Nelson um and she was saying like please don't make me chant anything um because I don't want to chant like she doesn't want to like um like take someone else's incantation into her body and manifest it, it like it's like like a big no-no for her and um and I was like quite interested in that because like like it's, it's very powerful to like to repeat and repeat and repeat something and if it's if you don't know what it means it could mean like something like terrible <laughs> and that you're you're bringing it inside but I don't think and we can't really like um test out those repetitive technologies on zoom that easily but something really interesting and weird happens when we do it like you, you repeat like a syllable like uh, kissing someone that you you love or, or something that you know like and sometimes I, I try to like uh, emit some the syllable of, of the poetry, like I, I kiss the, the void, you know, like. <laughs> and Aksagora say that you, we're not living in the in the top of the mountain, using the bottom of the ocean. Oh, er, I repeat myself, and I, and I re, reform myself in another space time. Carlos Soto Roman, what do you think about it? I was thinking about uh, Gertrude Stein and uh, repetition as as his insistence. Mm. Writing that down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an important part is Gertrude Stein. I think we should all read. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's really the insistence that is that makes the the uh, repetition so interesting. Uh, if you insist on something and then you create uh, a word and it's going deeper and deeper and deeper and uh, and it's of course dangerous too, like Nakia said, because if you don't know what is repeated, what is the exact thing, you might feel uncomfortable about it too. Yeah. True. So you have to be be aware of what you repeat. Because um, like uh, there's something I don't know I don't know I've only ever tried like experienced this a few times but if you um, or chanting or singing the same thing over and over and then sometimes like it does feel as if uh, my body's expanding or or some bits are expanding like organs are like moving away from each other and that's like the strongest um, like physical transportation I've had from any kind of like poetic uh, practice. Um, but maybe I was just, maybe everything was just vibrating. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like uh, yoga, before yoga, like, you know, that mantra yoga, you have that kind of syllable who made like, boom, barra. You know the Abraham Abulafia poets? It was a like, Kabbalist uh, poet in the Middle Age. He, he created like phonetic Kabbalah. And he 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 saw that in each word you have all the possibility of entities of gods of the of all the things. Then if you permutate the syllables in a word in different connection, you create new words. Then maybe we can finish that meeting with like a permutating words in different explosion. We don't. Beyond me, Felipe, what do you say? Think about it. Aiden, Aiden, uh, no, no, before, 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 Aiden, what do you think? He put something in the chat. Oh. Hey, Aiden. It's all very interesting. I keep thinking. <laughs> I just was typing there. There was a lot of stuff I could go away and think of for a month. Um, It was something you said that uh, uh, was happening earlier and in the middle of all this, whenever everybody was doing that little um, riff at the start, and I realized that uh, it, 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 when in Zoom, although you get a little delay, 
it becomes an identity of of each sound with the image as it comes on the screen. And um, and I got really afraid of uh, of doing anything in case my image came on the screen. And of course, when your image goes on the screen, you can't see when other people can see it. And so there's a disconnect between okay. speaking and being identified with it and being able to identify that you're being identified with it. Mm. Um, so just to connect that with nearly everything that was being said uh, all the way through this thread, um, uh, was something about control um, that nearly everything that was mentioned is is either a decision to be in control or not to be in control. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and uh, and the fear of either being in control or the fear of not being in control. But I just really enjoyed the the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't have the imagination of, 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 of all you guys to do all this sound <laughs> stuff. I just pretend. <laughs> um, uh, you can put the uh, gallery view on next time. If you, you can change the view setting so it doesn't do what you... But I, I can appreciate that it's quite... Uh, you, you can change the, the view in, in your own window. Yeah, no, no, I don't want to be in control. <laughs> I quite like, the, quite like the fact that... Uh, I will control all of you because I'm recording and, and I will erase you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. I, I wanted to add uh, about what you were saying. I mean, the, this problem of control for me is uh, really interesting. I've, I've been researching a lot uh, uh, the last years about it because I'm... I'm researching about the writing through procedures or writing uh, with the use of chance, like uh, like ulipo or fluxus or uh, whatever. And uh, I have this idea that th th there's like no complete control is impossible. And I mean, even if you uh, write your perfect poem, the the reception of of that poem you can't control it. But also, there's no total chance. I mean. Even when you make like the weirdest idea, it's also a selection of some procedures or some space or some time, whatever. So uh, I, I, I try to think them like interrelated, uh, uh, the, the control and chance or whatever uh, names yeah. we, we want to use. But the other side of what you say, uh, not only the control, I mean, in what you just wrote, it has to do with the, the idea of the ego, which is, related to control but but uh, not not always in a direct uh, way um, we had um, the visit of uh, Marjorie Perloff here in Chile in January and and I asked her to talk about like this kind of stuff like Ulipo, Fluxus and all that and we were talking about the uh, John Cage and uh, she she was a very good friend of him and uh, she told us that uh, she watched an, a rehearsal of one of his like indeterminate uh, works, and said that the, that John Kitch was the mass, the the, the most con uh, controller uh, person he, he had ever seen. He, he was like, you you do, you can't do that, you can't do that. So it's really funny. Like, uh, so I, I think in a way you can use also. The idea of control or chance or like you I mean you can show yourself I'm oh I'm hippie I'm really relaxed but but maybe you are even telling that it's a way of controlling or or to uh, uh, asking for one kind of reception so I mean everything that we say for example when when we say something before we read a poem it's also a kind of in, in a way you can read it as a kind of controlling the the reception so i don't know it's it's really mm. i mean if, if you start thinking bad about the poets you you can <laughs> think a lot uh, all those things i was thinking about this in like relation to school so um so I, I, I got really excited when i first um started thinking about scores and um but then there was like definitely a, a, a problem where like 
uh, yeah, with control, like how much, um, how much to control your scores beforehand. And we're working with other people, like how much to direct them and uh, I had to kind of let, let go a little bit, but I still can't really work it out. Um, it would be really interesting to um, like work with them, like have a theater director here who could like control us because they're really interesting in the way they like, like kind of evoke control over their kind of actors. Mm. Um, but that never happens in poetry. You never have a director. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think um, just to Question. say a thing on that briefly, um, the, the, the working in collaboration, uh, I've worked a lot, well, mainly in collaboration probably the last 10 years. And the most difficult thing is to is to actually give over control to someone else um, uh, to the point where you can no longer um, uh, truly identify your own input. Mm. It's a really difficult thing to do. You can say you're going to do it, but to actually mm. do it is 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 really difficult. Mm. Um, uh, and um, interesting because of that. Um, because uh, uh, at a certain point, the only way to almost give over control is to be just trying to understand what else is happening and allowing that to, to, to somehow, uh, somehow uh, lead you. Um, and even then, of course, you don't give over control, but it, it's the closest I've ever been able to understand it um, in the relation to a score um then uh i think i think you if you create a score and you trust the people that you're working with to some degree you will have um uh just by giving it to them and and not necessarily dictating anything you will have um possibly gone as far as you can to to i think uh affecting that performance and then um and then um for me anyway it would be a case of finding out and out of interest what do they do with it then when they're in the performance but yeah i don't think you can um uh, yeah it's like t that experiment about learning how to walk and by following the directions of how to walk and you can't you can no longer walk but yeah it's really um mm. interesting questions thank you Gasal, uh, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I want to ask a question uh, from Mia, and that also has to do with control. But one of the things that you do, um, you're working on poetry translation, and I want to know the level of control, because you're also working on translation and it's expanded field, the level of control and uh, the licensing that you give yourself for loss of control in translation, how you employ it, the control, loss of control mm. while you're working in poetry. But, uh, yeah. I think it goes back to what um, Aidan was saying. What's Aidan? Um, because it's like a collaboration. So it's how it's about your relationship with the source text. And if it's like um, a living person, like a poet, there's like a lot of, um, there's a completely different like kind of relationship to that control and how you deal with their text in translation to, um, and how you, cause you're kind of like representing it. Uh, and then the other hand, you can also like in its expanded sense, obviously translation is like, you can do whatever you can completely like take complete yeah, control done, over it. You've done a lot of creative translations as well. Yeah, yeah, well, I think always like, because um, I suppose the other side is that it's trying to do such a close translation that you to take, you, you don't realize how much control you're having over it. So you have to bring in creativity in a way to like cut into that um, overarching control. But um, like, it seems like every text or every poem or every, like, every source like piece in the for a translator is like is going to have a command a different um level of control uh 
just wondering like how so when we are no. freely engaging with the text translating it as creatively as we want are we still implying some sort of control on what is the level of creativity that can was the level of additional things that can be brought to this poem for it to be to still remain being a translation mm. I think that that yeah, I mean it's like about ident again going back to what um was just said, like um identification of of how the poem's gonna be identified, like who's gonna be uh whose whose identity will be attached to it. Because if you're speaking on behalf of someone else, um there's like ethical kind of concern, isn't there? If you kind of um well, I'll ask Carlos, like, because he's just published my translations, whether, how, how creatively, you know, because obviously my face is like on it, so you couldn't kind of go wild with it, but then, yeah. But we also remember you and I did this free translation of your grandmother's in Somerset, your, your grandmother's children's books collections. Yeah. Children and each of us just translated it into whatever we thought. So you, you brought a lot of perhaps memories of her and- uh, Oh yeah, I forgot and that. And I did whatever I could understand from those stories mm. we read together. So I think just to explain to uh, people who didn't know that uh, we were doing this uh, project, Nia and I, um, and we decided for it to be on translation. And Nia had these texts from her grandmother who had a, who had a fabulous collection of um, classical children's stories. And we were just translating the, these texts. First of all, they were texts, they were stories, and we translated them into poem, a, a poem that was written by two people. And, uh, and then each of us translated it differently. And I believe you, brought some Welsh into it, I brought some Persian, and then we just wrote our own stories into it. And it still was a translation of your grandmother's mm. stories. Um, well, that brings in the other side of that, which is like or, or the oral tradition, which would, is like much closer to um, sound poetry and what we've been talking about in a way, because in the oral tradition, the story is told like newly every time. It's translated anew with complete like creative license. So um, it's, quite, it's quite different from um, like, say for example, like because the translations you get in, in the bookshops in the UK, which it's quite different. Mm. Uh, can, can you make the, the, the effect that you uh, make at the beginning, like change of like position with the camera? Um, what do you, you can see? And yeah, we, we can finish with a big uh, uh, Nia. What to, what we make with a, a private session of all of us? But before Federico Eisner, welcome to the group. Can you say uh, something to us, please? <laughs> Hey everybody, nice to meet you again, some of you. Um, well, no, no, I, I, I don't, <laughs> you put me in, in trouble. Um, <laughs> Bad idea, you know, like go to the, the old you have, nothing, you have nothing to say and you're saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, nothing. I, I, I want to keep in getting in these sessions. Um, and now let's go on to the what what do you want to do martin and uh, Nia, to make uh, finish with a um, uh, collective improvisation and proof i don't know what would say but and then that's better uh, yeah. who, who is alice ice pad who is, is uh, chris this chris. is chris Gapke. I invited him, I tell him Nia yes. is gonna be here and Chris is here. That's lovely. Chris Creek? No, who is what is he? He's called Chris Gadkin. Chris there he is. Yes. Chris, <laughs> yay! What do you want to say, please? Thank you for coming. Chris, do you want to say something? Yeah, 
Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. It's great to see and, and listen to everyone. Love you. Yeah. Let's jam. I've got a. I've got a. A, a paintbrush yeah, to jam. use. I'll jam with a paintbrush. Uh, we follow Nia. Nia, we're next uh, president of the multiverse poetry. Yeah. <laughs> Imperatrice of the new multiverse poetry. Riff Layo. Yeah. Yay.
Can I kiss you, Nia, in the... In the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. I think that was my ear you got, Martin. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, can you uh, help me? <laughs> I'm, I'm completely in another state of... Universe trans. Maybe this is because it's bedtime here, so this is a good trance. My, my dream is became uh, autist because you know the, the, the autistic people they they are not the virus of language. The autistic people they they are oh, autistic. Yeah, the, the autistic people they they they're free from language. They're so happy in their free, 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 free. No, uh, the you know that is that that is I, I understood that language is a virus. With working with autistic people, you know they only make sounds without meaning. Just the, when the sound and the matter and the soul and the spirit and the mind and the same thing. Do, do you remember that that history when when a schizophrenic guy he said like, do you listen voices in your in your head? He said in my head, in my spirit, in my mind. <laughs> you know, like he has like four or five, six different um, receivers from sound. Do you remember that guy? Uh, you, because I, I invited Andres at one time to make a workshop in the psychiatric hospital where he worked with the, all the people that they listen voices and and, 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 and a, a guy who was absolutely uh, sure that we live in a bank. The multiverse bank, you know, we are, we are like prisoners of a bank. The human being is in a bank, you know, we are like a kind of a action of some. And in that way, maybe virus is a kind of um, action of some other intelligent dimension. Father or closer than lips. And banking. Banking, banking lives. Uh, what do the bankers do? The bankers. I don't know. They, they bankster. They bankster. Banksters. They bankster. They're bonkers, sir. The bankster or the gangs, the gams, banks, banks, gams, 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 gams,
That's, uh, those are my last words. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. Uh, do you want to say anything more, Nia? Um, would, would you no, just thank you. But thanks for joining in and listening and regenerating. Would yeah. you recommend this uh, this conversation to other friends? Yeah, there's um, a few years <laughs> like on Facebook. Or <laughs> now you can like. put your rating and your review under the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so you should ask been... um, Nathan Nathan Walker. Has... That would be good. Oh, great, great. Yeah, the idea is, uh, as we told you, yeah, to put together people from everywhere, and and it's great for us to have at least some time during the week to talk about the things we, we really, really like. That's great. Yeah, well, I think the team, he, yeah. he has something to say us. Hmm? Joaquin Montesui, because at the beginning he did say, yeah, you talk yeah. now you turn, Joaquin. I don't know what to say. The, the discussion went in so different places, so uh, it was hard to, to pick one side out of all of this and make a statement out of this. I don't know. Uh, I just enjoy being there. I had my time on the, ne the, the last time to speak with people for a long time. So this time I just decided to listen. Um, no, it could have been uh, the ritual thing aspect and uh, the all uh, um, ego aspect of the poets that mm. was mentioned by Iwudan also. And uh, I don't know, it's so complex. It's very deep, complex. and. Um, Go on, we're, we're with you, Lan. You, 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 you have very nice lights. Well, you have <laughs> now. now you're, you're like covered with like golden lights around you. You're your friends. Let's yeah. go. Go on with your thoughts freely, more than possible. Please. Joachim, go on. Go, beyond, go on beyond all the limits. Go on. You, are, you, are, you have that. Torch, please. What do you want? I don't know. <laughs> A sound. Okay. Well, let's dig further out of the ego. That's all I want to say. Ego and self. What is the self? It's always the same question. For me, uh, uh, as a poet, this is the last interesting thing i think that means in french this is very interesting in english when i when you say this is the last thing it should be the, the thing you don't want to discuss but i think it's something is absolutely interesting nowadays to discuss to discuss about what is ego what is the self and what are we doing here nowadays especially nowadays and what is the meaning of being a poet on earth right now <laughs> it's quite, it's quite a, a trip, I have to say. So I don't know what, I, Martin. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> you say <laughs> off the limit. Okay, I go off the limit. We, we have a meet tomorrow. Tomorrow night we have a meet uh, at seven and thirty. If you don't remember, but yeah, we talked about it. No, uh, Joaquin Montesui has his level of some poetry, you know. And that, I repeat, sorry, I repeat, <laughs> Raúl Krausman in the best condition of the world. Make by Joaquin Montesquieu his level errado, man. And I don't know, I feel, I feel uh, with you, like, uh, that is my family. I just, I talked talk to my mother, like, yesterday. I mean, no, uh, how do you think about coronavirus? No, it's just like, uh, sorry, I have to ask to my poet's uh, family, because um, um, I think in, in, uh, in the black, white TV, the virus is an intelligence that we don't can arrive, we don't arrive from ourselves, and that is why Anaxagoras is so important. You know, the pre 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 Socratic philosopher Anaxagoras, he said that everything is all around. We have not a beginning, we have not an end. Everything is like glowing and exploding, and. I don't know, you. I, 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 everything that I listen to, I, I feel that connection with you and, and with me also. I, I'm so happy that we're close together. I, I think that you are my family. Felipe. <laughs> close together, close.
close together, close together, close together, close together. I've been thinking all this time about the, this beautiful song by Laura Brannigan, Self Control. So I hope we can apply it to ourselves this week. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Richard Parker has an amazing poem about Laura Brannigan. Sorry? That's true, it's excellent. Rich yeah, Richard Parker uh, has, has a wonderful poem about Laura Brannigan, so probably we can yeah. read it next session. <laughs> and we can talk about cricket. Yep, <laughs> or baseball. <laughs> I, I think that the most, powerful, the most powerful idea is go all together to the silence. To? To the silence. Yeah. If we, we stay together, Silence. That I think that is a, for me. Felipe is a, uh, yeah. That, that, that's the connection with mystical. In, I, I I think that some poetry have that connection with like we go beyond meaning, we go beyond like uh, power control, and then like Quakers. What is Quakers? The Quakers, you know, the, this um, American... Los Quakeros, Los Quakeros. Eso, sí, ellos. They gather together like 300 people just to make silence. Mm. And if the spirit moves you, you can speak. Um, Felipe, maybe we can make uh, 10 seconds of deep silence. Well, maybe we could, uh, I, I propose a, a test. Uh, I, I was, I'm very interested in the minutes of silence in the public activities, in the, in the, I don't know, in the football games, etc. right? It's, it's very common. And once I started a, a research, but it was too long to, to finish it, but I wanted to take the time of, of the minutes of silence. And usually there were like 30 seconds or 40 seconds. And the idea is that I, I think that people cannot uh, bear the silence. And, and it, it was really crazy. I mean, people at 30 seconds uh, start getting nervous and, 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 and it goes on. So, um, I propose that uh, I, I will use a chronometer here. And we'll start a minute of silence, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, th th this is a good idea. You can close your eyes and you open when you think that the minute has finished, right? And I, and I will tell you. So one, two, three, close your eyes. Well, uh, Martin, you were the first. Only 37 seconds. <laughs> Time Dirk, is different from Martin. Dirk <laughs> won the prize. Dirk opened uh, his eyes just an exact minute. So please. <laughs> <laughs>
And uh, <laughs> some of you were even further. Uh, Andres was one minute and 12 seconds, and Nia and, and the rest uh, uh, of the others were at one minute, 20, 20 seconds. So Ooh. you should work making uh, minutes of silence in the public activities. It's a uh, fine work. I did, a, I did a little experiment. Yeah? I let it, I put my uh, mic on mute, so it was silent to you, but I was talking to myself. Oh. Hmm? Right, so it was I, I. It was a minute of silence for me to everyone, but I did not be silent to. So oh, you know what I mean. I kind of split the split it up. Great, <laughs> as an experiment. That's great. good. Well, we can try different experiments all over the <laughs> these weeks, but it's but it's wonderful to know how how relative it. I, Martin likes uh, to talk about the relativity of time and, and, and it's really, really different uh, the experiences. I mean, we, we always uh, have that impression that time sometimes is slower or, or faster. I, I mean, in, I think in this kind of state we are like uh, talking and, and sharing our thoughts, it's, it's obvious that we're like more in a slow mood, but, but in, in a football game, people just want the, the game to start, so <laughs> they are more anxious. Mm. Well, I think uh, we're done, Martin. I think we're okay. I don't know, Nia. No. <laughs> I'm. Um, yeah, I'm, Nia. Um, I'm normally asleep by now. <laughs> I'm very. Uh, I go to bed very early now. Buenas noches, Nia. Buenas noches. But, um, I thought that I was really good at knowing what. Can all sing you a lullaby? Oh. Yeah. Can you? Can you sing yourself a lullaby for us? Um, <laughs> yes. Well. Okay, so what's that? I'm embarrassed because I don't know the like. Da, 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 da. Mm. Oh, um, <laughs> is that really? That's that really uh, famous one. Mm, da, 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 da. I don't know the words though. Can you close your eyes? <laughs> no, it's scary. I need to be in control. Yeah. <laughs> All through the night. Da, 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 da. All through the night. Mm, I don't know the rest. <laughs> yeah, great. Made me fall asleep almost. <laughs> Oh, but I, I watched one of your um, videos where there was that really scary Icelandic uh, lullaby from Maya Yanta. Mm. From Maya, yeah, that was amazing. That was, um, yeah, we shouldn't end with a lullaby because that it reminds me of that. It was really frightening. <laughs> uh, you don't want to go to sleep thinking of that. <laughs> and that's where she left you, so... So think about that all through the night. All through the night. And Ross in an os. All through the night. All through the night. <laughs> That's beautiful. Beautiful. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's spooky. <sighs> right. Then to deliver then. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Then to deliver. Oh, my God, Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, come on. Yeah, wonderful. Peace on. Peace Thanks, on everyone Earth. else. Peace on earth, man. Why caught the sub? Yes. Except for the revolution. <laughs> Bye, Margaret. Bye.
Can we hang out here for a little bit? I don't know. Who <laughs> wants to go to bed? I know. Nia, good night. Go to bed. Thank you so much. It was lovely. Thanks, Nia. I, I don't want I to go have to FOMO me. now if you're all hanging out here. Yeah, yeah let's hang out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.